guys. I'm Re. I'm Mar. I'm Quality. MV1. And this is the need to know. So, guys, today we are back. This is season 11. We back, we back, we back. So, today we're going to do our intro, then we're going to go right into our episode. So, just so y'all know, we did the 2021, the 2022 project already. So, this is 2023. Just so you know, this, so this is 2023. Um, and this time we have two artists. I'm actually really excited because we usually only yeah, have one. one. <laughs> we usually have one. So I'm really excited that it's two of y'all today. And isn't it a coincidence that they know each other? Isn't that nice? Look King's at that. No yeah, so we're going to go real quick with the intro. So what's new is that, well, we got audio. We doing audio and visual for you guys. If you didn't know, now you know. And I want. I'm not gonna say this right now. I'm gonna let Shamar tell you at the end what's happening. What's happening in August? Oh. I'm gonna let you talk okay. about that. All right. So, um, pretty much in August, I'm actually moving to Dallas, Texas. Um, mm -hmm. It's a big move, kind of scary, but um, yeah, I'm excited. So, congrats. Thank you. Yeah, congrats. That don't mean the show ending, just so y'all know. That don't mean the show. <laughs> um, yeah. That don't mean the show's ending. So we're gonna continue to do what we're doing now. So we do the flash season. It's gonna happen two months at a time. We're gonna give you all episodes. It's gonna be nice. Um, other than that, what's new with me? If you didn't know, I'm a mom now. Thank right. you. Right. <laughs> and book two is out. So if you don't know, it's called Unknown. Get that right now. It's called Unknown. And it's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and eBooks is about to be out in a couple weeks. So get on that. Thanks. <laughs> so let's talk about it. So we're going into the 2023 project. That's the right year, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not be fucking that shit up. We got two artists here today. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. I'm 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 quality. Um I'm an artist. I'm from Brooklyn. Um I've been doing music. What year is it? 2022? Uh -huh. yep. I started music in 2017, so about five years. Yeah, five years. I'm lying. I'm so sorry. 2016, I've been doing music for six years. I've been writing since 2017, but I started making beats in the beginning. So, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited to be here, man. Shout out to y'all too, man. You know, MV1 from Jamaica, Queens, Southside. I've been That's working right. on a music <laughs> thing <laughs> for about three, four years now, but it's progress in the making. You know, I got a lot to prove, a lot to show. So I'm here. I'm gonna, let's start with what you guys is working on right now. Um, well, yeah, let's just start with that. What you working on right now? Okay. Um, currently right now, man, uh, it took about a year and a half, not a, a break. Uh, I wouldn't say a, it was a break specifically like, yo, man, I'm kind of done with music. I kind of just was doing a lot of business ventures and sh stuff like that. Well, you, you curse? You curse. Mm -hmm. All right, bet. I was doing business shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? And um, But now I'm just back, you know what I'm saying? I just definitely wanted to get back into the motion of music and the feeling, you know, just doing something that I love and something that I do. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to pay me a dime to do with this, to do this. So long story short, um, I'm working on this project called The Gorilla. It's a, it's a character that I created, you know, a spirit animal that I've attached myself to that, um, man, that, that really embodies a lot of things. And I want to, sometimes I realize you can't really express or, uh, what's the word, describe your spirit animal. And I think for me, I have to do it through music. So... I'm gonna give a project, and um, it's definitely, definitely, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's gonna be gonna shake up the city, and that's my manifestation. So that's what I'm working on currently right now. You know? And for me, right now, I mean, I just dropped my first EP in the beginning of March, so that's something that was a big accomplishment for me. You know, I worked on that, put my heart on time. It did a lot for me mentally, helped me grow in other places and I'm working on new music almost every day. So I feel like I'm so versatile in what I do that I don't really got no limits to stopping anytime soon. So I've been working on a lot of new music. Definitely got two songs coming out soon with some visuals. So a lot of work in the making. Fire. All right. <clears throat> so um, I guess the first question I would have for both of you guys, um, I, I know a lot of artists use pretty much like 
what you said mentally uh, dropping your first EP was like a big deal. Um, so for artists, I know when it comes to the mental, say, highs and lows, they kind of use that as aspiration to uh, create a project. So your Gorilla Project and your first EP, do you feel like it was more of a mental issue that you was going through that you expressed through the music or was it kind of like a outside source? I mean, for me personally, the route I was going for in my first EP, got that R&B feel, definitely gave you a lot of pain to it. Also with a lot of vibes. So the whole mental aspect of everything was, it's tough being an artist and separating, you know, that lifestyle from your regular lifestyle because you definitely can't be the same. But also trying to make those feelings turn into certain songs, you know. So it's mm -hmm. tough, you know, releasing that onto the mic. Sometimes you don't always know how, but when they get there, it's there, so. For me, um, man, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I kind of grew my fan base and my whole um, kind of career as an artist in college. So that's a great question because transferring from college to the real world, you know what I'm saying, is definitely a difficult transition. And if I'm being honest, I got all this love and I would say praise and I built, like I said, a fan base in school. Then when I came out of school, I kind of, in my opinion, I wasn't feeling that energy that I had once before. And that affected me, like career-wise, music, personal personality, to the point where, for me, I, I think I could be transparent on this. I, I had like a mild depression because mm -hmm. like, I'm like, yo, like, when you come from school and you get all this love and praise and appreciation and you come to New York, Remember, New York is tough. Mm -hmm. And ain't nobody fucking know me here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm coming on. I'm quality, whatever the case may be. And I got my ass humbled real quick. And so now that music that I, for this project, reflects the fact that, yo, quality, like, you can't expect, one, you can't expect people to, you can't expect certain things from certain people. Mm -hmm. And you can't, like, I'm not, like, from the music, I'm not wait. Like, I have a track called Wait On Me, and I'm and the record is just basically explaining that I'm not waiting on nobody to validate me or validate my art. I'm not waiting on a label to sign me. I'm not waiting on my fans to love me or support me. I'm not waiting on that no more. I realize I'm the source. Well, God, of course, is, the for me, the source of all. Of all but I'm the source. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that produced the music. I'm the, It all starts with me. So, you feel what I'm saying? So... That this project reflects that energy, it reflects that confidence and that self belief that I lost for a little bit, and I got back through the music. So the music kind of helped me get through that. So yeah, it's a good question though. Thanks. Real shit. All right, so uh, touching base on um, kind of like going through a lot mentally and physically. Um, recently, I'm pretty sure everybody knows we we've, we've gone through a pandemic. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys both. How has the pandemic affected your music, whether positive or negative? The pandemic, it did a lot for me because in the midst of it, the reason I started making music was because of my cousin, K.I., and I lost him in the pandemic. So I had a lot of time, you know, to process that in terms of like just, it was already a lot having to, you know, stay in the house, couldn't really go nowhere. Then on top of dealing with the loss of my cousin, it gave me a lot of time to realize what I really wanted out of this. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the music, like I let it just portray everything I'm feeling whenever I'm feeling like that, like the mood, the vibe, however. Mm -hmm. And I use the inspiration that he gave me to you know, push forward and keep doing this thing. Cause without him, I don't think I ever touch a mic. It's heavy. It's Rest in peace to him, my boy. Shout out to him. I actually know him. I met him. Where him? I was actually I'm the first. I met him. Where um at your spot? That was the first day I met him. And I, did I meet you that day mm -hmm. too? Yeah. Man, the pandemic. Oh man. Um, couldn't record no records. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't couldn't make no music like, cause you know what I'm saying. Can't be around people. So that definitely affected it. Um. So I wasn't able to make no music. So I stayed, obviously I stayed in the crib, but then, you know, to kind of not talk about music, I'm not going to lie, during the pandemic, I made the most money I've ever made, like real spill, like, you know what I'm saying? I realized like 
Yo, you can make a lot of money out of people's fear. I made a lot of money. I made a mm-hmm. lot of money. But um, music-wise, though, as soon as it kind of cleared up just a little bit and I could I could get back in the studio, I'm not going to lie, I recorded the most songs I've ever made. Like, 2020 was a great year for me music-wise because now everybody obviously is inside. You know, it's time for you to, like, I'm a man of craft. Like, I love the craft of writing. I love the craft of the music. Mm-hmm. So that gave me the time to really lock in, like, get better with my pen. And, um, yeah, so shout out. I mean, not shout out the pandemic, but, you know what I'm saying? I turned a negative to a positive. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right, so switching gears, um, right. I realized with listening to music recently that a lot of artists are stepping out of their genre. Uh, most recently, Drake with uh, his project, which got a lot of uh, criticism. Right. Um, so do you guys feel like in your artistry, you're able to step out of a genre and feel comfortable? Or do you feel you would receive like a certain backlash because of going somewhere where you're not normally in? Right. I feel like the range of music is so wide nowadays like you can't really categorize things how they used to because just the different sounds that are coming out like mm-hmm. we still got r&b music to this day but the r&b music that they had back in the days definitely gave everybody a different feel mm-hmm. than they do now so in terms of like just the different <laughs> genres that are being created or just being brought back I feel like the biggest thing is like embracing that, like allowing each artist to do whatever they want. Like you don't have to contain yourself to one genre. Like I feel like I could do any genre I want to do. And I got music in different genres that I haven't released yet. So it's like whenever I feel like the time is right, I'm definitely going to touch whatever genre I want to touch. I'm not there yet in my craft to venture out into a different genre. I'm nowhere. I'm nowhere near where I want to be as a writer yet. And I'm not confident enough to step into another lane yet, you know. So down the line, I'm definitely, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm pretty sure as long as I continue to keep writing, I continue to get better, working with different producers, mm-hmm. why not step into, you know what I'm saying, do a, a different sound and see what I could do and move in shape. But as of right now, you know what I'm saying, I'm definitely not making no dance, I'm not making no EDM, you know what I'm saying, I'm not making no go-go. Not making no Jersey Club. I'm good for right now. You know what I'm saying? All right. But I love that album, by the way, though. I'm mm-hmm. fucking with that album. <laughs> you like that I album? I fuck with that album. I No, no, no. I love that album. I bumped that. I've been bumping that shit every day since it dropped. It's like that. It's like that for me. <laughs> for me. You feel what I'm saying? I like that shit. I feel like him being, first and foremost, he's a top tier artist. Him doing something like that, one that's very fearless. Mm-hmm. He's pushing... Yeah, you know, like you like that question just now. He's showing you, yo, like yo, I've done dominated rap, a little bit of R and B for ten years. Like now, once I I'm gonna show y'all this. Now I'm gonna go in this lane right here and do that as well. So I enjoy the music. The beats are fire. Like forget about the lyrics and forget about this Drake. If you just listen to the production of the records, I think I enjoy yeah. it. I think the production is solid. Mm-hmm. And you know, he just did his thing, man. He had me dancing and shit in the car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck with it. I fuck with that project. Right. I'm listening to that shit after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I I feel like at one point when I was a kid, like I thought I could rap too. Mm-hmm. Like, um, which is which is gonna be my next question. Like, okay. how hard is it to be an artist? Because I feel like a lot of people, like, they just think, okay, I I just write a bunch of shit and like it rhymes. Go. I bet I could go to the studio and like make a record, but like right. how how difficult or how long is that process to know like okay this is the track like that I want to produce. So wait wait, wait my fault. Mm-hmm. Say question to me the one question. more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you. I got you. So yeah. like pretty much like when I'm pretty sure everybody had that moment where like you had to write a poem in school and right, like right, right, right. you thought that shit was hot. Like, <laughs> yeah, hot. So but like I've noticed a lot when it comes to artists like they usually say like it's it's not that easy. It's not just like writing words that rhyme but right. instead like it has to mean something so right. like how hard is it to being an artist like wh- what does it take to actually um differentiate yourself from somebody that just writes poems to right. somebody that actually makes music um definitely in, in my my opinion you got to have that confidence to transfer from just a person that's just writing in their notes to oh yeah i'm gonna record this and i'm actually gonna release it and accept and embrace the feedback that comes from it. So um, 
I believe that's 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 what it takes. So you got to have that confidence. If not confidence, because I realize confidence, you can't just have confidence. You got to have experience comes first, then you have confidence. There's no such thing as just you just confident. No, that means you're brave. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So first to start with that bravery, like, yo, I'm about to write this, I'm about to record this, I'm about to put it out. And then to continue, that's where you're really taking it serious. Like, nah, I just, I, I'm not just dropping one track. I'm going to keep dropping another one and another one and another one. And then you kind of just dive into the the love of the craft. So I think it's uh, it's challenging to be an artist because, especially in today's age, because we're in like a real content, real, real heavy content um, era. Mm-hmm. So... This, I don't think, I don't know if I heard this from somewhere. Spotify, there's 66,000 new songs being dropped on Spotify every day. Every day. That's 66,000. That's about 20 million for the year. So to differentiate, to, excuse me, if I'm saying that word correctly, differentiate yourself. I think the number one answer is be authentic. Yes. Just be authentic. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're if a rapper from Missouri... And but you, you know, what I'm saying you got to you know how to teach people financial literacy. You know what I'm saying? But you've been blessed to know how to write that and make it wavy. Then do that. If you a girl who, you know, you're the flyest girl that do the, you know, what I'm saying that's a nail tech. But you just know how to put words together and make it fly. Mm-hmm. Do that. And that's you just being authentic. And that's how I believe you stand out. But then you got to that's you know, then you got to just continue and just get creative. You know. Oh, lastly, I got to say this. I learned I had a I had a meeting before this interview. And my guy, shout out Mel Doro. I told you I was gonna shout you out. He mm-hmm. said this line to me. He said, You cannot learn and look good. You cannot learn and look good at the same time. It's literally impossible. For example, when you learned how to ride a bike, what happened in the beginning? You fell on your ass. Mm-hmm. Ain't no, you ain't just get on a bike and you was litty. Like mm-hmm. it don't happen. Girls who do makeup. In the beginning, you ain't just First, you had to do yourself first or your friend. I'm 100% sure you look ugly and your friend did. <laughs> right? So that line just makes so much clarity. It makes so much sense. You cannot learn and look good at the same time. You're going to look ugly. You're going to look like an asshole. You're going to look stupid. And then you continue. And then that's when you look good. You got to learn first before you look good. So that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, I mean... In terms of the music, it definitely will quality sell for the authenticity part. Like, that plays a big part in it. As well as everything else, I mean, I I haven't been doing music for too long, about three years in. And before that, I was big on basketball. So I kind of transfer that mindset to the music in terms of how I think about music and everything else. Like, That's fire. Because when everything got serious basketball-wise, like, I started to realize what I had to put myself through physically, mentally, everything to get to the places I wanted to get to. Cause that's what plays a big part in a lot of this like real life shit. Like you gotta really be willing to put your body and mind through everything before you sit here and try to give up if that's even the result to you. And that's why I'm a big Kobe fan. Like his mindset towards the game just really change everything. The way he think about it, the way he plays, he watches, like, this music thing, like, you don't practice, you don't record often, or you don't write, you don't listen to beats, like, you'll lose it just as quick as you got it. Okay, so, I was listening, I'm getting my questions. But, um, to piggyback off of what you were saying, so what are some of you guys' like, learning moments, if that, if you have some? I have a lot. Uh, but, a learning moment, in terms of, like, uh, like just music career wise that you could educate others it's one of them there's a lot of people that try to run from run from the craft of being an artist and what I mean by that is people think they could just drop a song and you blow sometimes in certain scenarios it happens but I be knowing some people that just try to drop music but they never try to perform it that they never do shows like I personally me I, when I started in the beginning, I said, nah, if I'm going to do this this music shit, I, I got to perform. Like, I got to get in front of people. So that's definitely something you want to do. Like, yo, you, you got to perform your record. And I know it, it takes a lot of courage 
that's gut wrenching because you about to perform some music in front of people. You your thoughts come in, negative thoughts, doubts, and shit come in. But once you get like three, four shows in of you just building that thing up, you know what I'm saying, and performing your art, then the shit gonna get litty because people be thinking like, yo, you they think they can run from that. Like you cannot run from performing. Like you cannot. So that's one thing I would say. And another last thing is, um, if you put yeah, um, you put all your stock and value into your supporters or your fans and shit like that, you're going to lose yourself in a process. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Like I'd be looking for sometimes supporters and shit like that for, to validate me and validate my art. And I realized, you know what I'm saying? Like I was talking to my, my therapist. I go to therapy, by the way. I was talking to my therapist and she was just telling me like, yo, like your foundation should be you. You supposed to be a fan of yourself first. Mm -hmm. And she made me realize like, Yo, in the beginning, I didn't have not one listener. I was the listener. I was a fan of my work. I was a fan of the craft. I was a fan of making my beats, even though those shits was trash. I was a fan of writing my own records and shit like that. So she told me, yo, your foundation should be you. And then everything you put out, if you're proud of your work, then it doesn't matter if somebody likes it or, the, or if somebody doesn't like it. As long as you and your team are proud of your work, you're good. All of that stress and worry, you don't even have that because y'all... If I put that out, I'm proud of it. I don't care what y'all say. Just like how Drake said that line. He was like, yo, I know the feedback, whatever, but you know what I'm saying? I'll just wait on y'all to catch up. You feel me? Just like always. And that right there just made me realize, like, this man, he, he only saying that because he's one, he's been through it before. And that's that experience talking. You know what I'm saying? It's little shit like that. Like, yo, I'm just waiting on y'all to catch up on this dance album. You feel me? I'm saying? I don't care what y'all saying. I'm proud of the work. So. That's my little two things I could say to the artist, man. And one of my key learning moments had to be from what I learned from my cousin, most definitely. Like, I don't think I know anybody that works as hard as him when it came to just the process and the craft of making music. Like, I'm talking about he literally eat, sleep, record. Like, mm -hmm. that's the only thing he knew. I don't know anybody else that works like that. Just the patience, the time. The thought process and you got to put in all of that like most people just do what they want to do that takes away from the discipline that you got to put yourself through so it's like you can never get too comfortable doing something that you love what so what's you guys this process like how you guys make music like what's your what's from step one or step two like how how do you get in the in the motion to do what you gotta do so for me i don't really got like a a basic process that i do on a regular but of course it starts with the beat for me most times. Like I like to listen to different beats here in Tom Tom. And I make a lot of good music from my car. Like I'll just drive long nights, listening to different beats and ideas just flow in my head like nonstop. If I'm in a studio session, I definitely vibe out to the beat a little bit. And you know, I'm big on just perfecting my craft and I'm picky. So, you know, anytime I feel like I ain't doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I definitely pick up for what I am doing. And I try to not stick to one thing when I'm making music, as far as my flows. Like, I like to listen to a lot of different people between hip hop, R&B, like rock, everything. Like I listen to all genres of music and I try to translate that in my own form with my music. I'm not, I'm gonna be super honest. I'm not a fan of the whole 50,000 people in the studio. Nice. Not a fan of that. Uh, my process, I honestly like to write by myself. I like to be in solitude when I'm when I'm writing. Um, I'm realizing, man, I, I really start to write late, like 11-ish, like 11 p.m. And I don't, if I'm being honest, I don't really have like a, like say for example, I don't got like a system. Like, yo, I'm about to write at this time for this blah, 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 blah. Um, it's kind of sporadic in a sense. And I'm definitely, I feel like I want to try to discipline myself to, okay, yo, Kwa, we're going to write from 9 to 11 p.m. for the next 30 days. I just want to see how that process is for me. But um, for the most part, yeah, I'm, I'm very picky when it comes to beats. Some, some producers like it. Some producers hate it. I just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just... That's just how I am. If I if I hear something, if I, I gotta hear me on the record, 
Like I cannot make a song if I don't hear myself on the on the record. Like literally, like when you listen to something, I'm pretty sure he know. Like you listen to something, you can literally hear yourself on the record. You no words has been written yet. You just hear you, and it's just a spiritual thing. So I gotta take my time. You know, listen to the beats, get in there, start writing, and just have fun, man. And just and just like just let go. I think you should try that though, the like the thirty day thing. Right. And then like compare it to how you like sporadically right. right. Yeah, that would be dope. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> sure, why not today? Start now. No, yeah, because like even with me, like I I could write on like I'm be like, yeah, I'm gonna write today, I'm gonna write right. tomorrow. But it's like you be walking and you be like, Oh shit, like mm-hmm. and you be like, Yeah, this is nice. Like yeah. and you start writing. Like that that's I feel like you'll it's just different. Yeah. You'll get more you're just more creative that way, right. I feel. So do that, do that. <laughs> well, you still, you still, my fault. I know this is this is a little tangent, but you still fuck with Jay Critch? I love Jay Critch. I, I can't, no but <laughs> I love Jay Critch. But so. it's like, even like, for example, with him, like sometimes, you know, you get music that you just be like, that don't even fucking make sense. Like, um, why would you even think to right. say that on a track? Like, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's a lot of artists you listen to, you be like, damn, why the fuck did you say that? Like, that don't even make sense. Right, like, right. You hit the tape. Yeah, Sorry, right, I was over here hitting the Actually, shit I got too. a quick question. All right, so. Being that we all from New York, like now you from Dallas now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to you. Right. Uh, so being that we all from New York, like we've had people come in and out in terms of like who's the best artist. Um, so I don't think I want to ask like who who y'all think is the king of New York, but rather mm-hmm. who do y'all feel, in your opinion, is like the best artist for you. So like not not in terms of inspiration, but more so like every time you hear, every time they drop something, like you immediately want to hear it because it's like. They've they've been producing and, and making tracks that's like speaks to you personally that it's just that's from New York. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy that it's tough though. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm I'm not too like it's I listen crazy. to trap music, but that ain't something my go to. So most times if I am listening to hip hop, it'll be like some rap or maybe some I listen to R and B, but like in terms of New York artists, it's I don't know who I could say I rush to listen to. I listen, like, if I'm rushing to listen to somebody, it might be Davies. Like, I want to hear bars. Like, <laughs> I want to hear somebody <laughs> spitting. <laughs> He's crazy. But why you, why you, New why York, you like, I don't know. Why it's too mean? much drill going on. Like, of yeah. course, you listen to Favi. Yeah. There ain't too many to pick from, I feel like. That's a, that's I'm a, a Davies broad fan, range. So you like, Davies, that's one. Um, okay. So, I mean, first and foremost, like, shout out to, you know what I'm saying, the drill movement, you know what I'm saying, and mm-hmm. everybody that partake in it, from the Chef G's to the, you know what I'm saying, the 5E's, the Pop Smokes, the 2 G's, everybody that play a role into to the drill, because that shit is carrying, it's carrying our city at the mm-hmm. moment, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, it's been carrying our city for about, for a long time, but it just really started getting pop around what 2019 2018 but um if i'm being honest like there's nobody i could say like yo i'm i'm as soon as they drop i'm running to it but somebody who i'm definitely like i whenever he drop i'm downloading it is uh capella gray yeah, you feel yeah, what i'm saying rb rb r&b kind of guy mm-hmm. i'm fucking with i ain't gonna lie i'm fucking with dream doll I, f- I like dream doll i think the track she mean i became like a fan after the like she did the track with ross on his album mm-hmm. um richer than i ever been like she killed that verse and i like i like she's from new york and i love like her tonality like the aggressiveness but she's still like you know what i'm saying a lady it's just so fire mm-hmm. you feel what i'm saying um so like really yeah capella gray of course you know what i'm saying if you know five you know five a boogie of course you know what i'm saying i know whenever boogie drop the whole new york listening to him mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying he's a staple um, I love, you know what I'm saying, Young and May. Feel me? Gotta throw mm-hmm. her in there. Feel me? She in there. I fuck with Young and May. But I feel like um I just feel like we still got a lot of work to do. It's a lot of it's a lot of creativity out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? And it's room. It's room. One thing I understand, like, you know, I study marketing. It's a it's a it's a it's a pie. You get what I'm saying? So you got the drill scene, drill piece, you got R and B, you got people that do conscious rap. You know what I'm saying? You do, everybody got their own piece. It doesn't, you know what I'm saying? It's no, everybody don't have the whole cake to themselves. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? 
Oh, oh yeah. well, I definitely listen to my son Shawnee. <laughs> you know I'm saying he the wicks. <laughs> Shout out Shawnee. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree with y'all. I feel like New York, you know, is a staple of hip hop. Right. And it's kind of it's hard to see that. Like, even though drill is like pretty much like what we have, right. it's kind of hard to see like artists from Atlanta or LA. Even uh, what is it? He's from like Missouri or Kansas. Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow. It's yeah. like. The fact that they're taking over it, I'm not saying like New York should have it forever because obviously like right. there's gonna be artists from everywhere, but right. it's just the fact that like to me I feel like we don't have one solid artist that like going back to back to back in terms of like right. dropping. Like I, I mean, you could point to like maybe Cardi B, but Cardi B hasn't yeah. dropped. She hasn't dropped in a long time because she's thinking it's about Nikki. money. Like no, she, yeah, she's, she's chilling. She yeah. it's like for her, it's like where the money's taking her. Like. Mm. If she if the if the music is making her money, if mm. her going on a brand is making her money, if yeah. she's gonna be in a movie is making her money, like that's mm. where I feel like that's where her mm. mindset is at. Like she's gonna mm. make music, but that's not where the money is at for her at the moment. Mm. Like and she mm. said it, like she was like, you know, like if the movie is making me money, if I'm gonna do a collection, it's making me mm. money. Like that's where she's gonna move. Like, yeah, yeah. and I feel like that's what's happening now because we're such in a right now where everything is content. Like right. everything is I gotta drop this, I gotta right. drop this, I gotta collab this, right. I gotta collab that. Yeah. And that's like where like society uh, yeah. is going. Like yeah, getting your bag. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like she's like, all right, my bag is here, so that's where I'm going. Yeah. I f- I also feel too like um, I'm being like I don't think people say this enough, but yo. Hip hop or your music career, yo, that shit is sometimes it could be a, a alley to get into something else. Yeah, you feel me? Yo, I hit a, I got a number one track. Really not really trying to do music like that. I'm gonna just use this to get into yeah, to movies or whatever case may be. Mm-hmm. You using it for whatever you want to use it. I understand. You get what I'm saying? But then mm-hmm. there's people that really like, no, I really love the music shit. I actually love the craft, and I'm willing to just dive into it. So you know who's a good I, example of that? I want y'all to guess and see if I did that. That, that got, they got, music, got the record even, and got out of there? No, no, no. That they used something to get into music, though. From New York? Not from New York. Just in general. Oh, so, like, so they they use music to they, get into sound? No, they used something to get into music. It's an actor? I know you ain't talking about who I think. I mean, I was going to say, is it, is it, it can't be Drake. But yeah, it is. Oh, you said Drake? Yes. He was an actor before he was an artist. Okay. I mean, like, that's yeah. like... And it's like... Boom pops like right, but I also too want like people us like people to know like especially the artists that's gonna watch this just like basketball like yo you know what I'm saying it's hard to get drafted yes. it's literally every how many players is in the NBA I know for a fact it's less like, than what five hundred it's like four four hundred four hundred yeah yo think about that it's four hundred people in the NBA how many people we know play basketball. Now that that like, really did like pull me off guard when he did that. Like I was like, wow, yeah. like why? I was like, okay. Yeah. For what I'm saying. But so it, that's the thing too, like, cause I I've, I've been studying basketball a lot, and it's it's not that it's it is hard, but not hard in terms of like talent. It's just more so you gotta know people in order to get to that place. Like for example, um, there's certain players I was in the draft now. Like I'm pretty sure Paolo, like who just got drafted last night. Like I'm pretty sure he good. Like he. He good. But when it comes to, especially in the last 10 years, you, you'll you notice, like, the top five picks is usually not better than, like, the top 10 or, like, number 11 or something. Like, Donovan Mitchell is, is better than, like, probably the first – I'm not going to say the first five. But there's certain players in the top 10 that he's better than. Like, so, to me, it, it's really more about, like, who you know. Because a lot of people is kind of trash, but it's just, like – because they knew, like, say, Rich Paul or something, it's like, right. now I, I, I got myself in a different limelight because right. of who I know right. versus my talent. So, right. Yeah. I, but I feel like, though, like, it's different, though. And what I mean by that is, for basketball, for you get an NBA, you dead ass got to know how to ball. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As you can see for rap, not, Anything uh, is happening. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So it's a little different. Like, no, yeah, yeah. for rap, I mean, for, for ball, you cannot be whack and think you're going. First and foremost, when you get like recruited from a college, mm-hmm. like say, let's just say a D1, they're not going for a bum ass player yeah. ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you gotta have talent, you gotta have skill. You get what I'm saying? But also to it, it plays a role. Like for example, the dude that was on um My bad, my that was some mess up with my Oh, now you Gucci. <laughs> the the player from um 
uh, Philly um, that was that was balling out. His agent is Rich Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me, he was balling out in the playoffs. He was um, Rich Paul was basically saying like, "Yo, it don't matter about your draft number. It's about where you get drafted at. Because mm-hmm. yeah. once you go, like, say for example, like, say you get drafted to the Golden State Warriors and you're a point guard, you're like, it's no, you're not getting no burn over Curry. Mm. So you're gonna, you're just gonna be on a bench. Only time you're gonna be able to show out is during bus minutes." When they blow somebody out, that's the only time. But other than that, crunch time, you're not getting in there. Mm-hmm. But, like, say you go to, what's the trash team? <laughs> like Sacramento. So let's Sacramento. Hey, 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 hey. We went to the playoffs before this year. We was in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? We was in the playoffs. You feel me? But whatever trash team, you go to a trash team, you're going to automatically get time. So, mm-hmm. feel me? I know we went on a little tangent. I know it's supposed to be about music, but you know what I'm saying? It all ties in, man. Like, yeah. the percentage to get into the NBA versus also to, like, to even get into the music industry. Like, you can make a record, but in order to get to that, you know what I'm saying, that prestige that obviously, obviously we all want to get to, mm-hmm. it's going to take time, dedication, work ethic, and most yeah. importantly, who you know. I think music is more of a who you know kind of thing yeah. versus yeah, basketball. Yeah. Because yeah. right? if, if we being honest, like yeah. Doja Cat started off saying Moo. Yo. Oh, right. I'm done. And now she's winning Doja Grammys though. and shit. Like, right. Nah, she's like, tough. She I ain't gonna lie. She, she, is she ascended. Yeah. She yeah. ascended. She's Can't like, when I listen to Doja, for first, I, listen, I like to listen to women too. Like I'm not just the listening niggas all day. Like yeah. I gotta listen to women. I love women. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely love what they bring to, to music. Mm-hmm. And Doja like, like you just said, she went from Moo. Like, I remember that shit was, like, you know what I'm saying? It was a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Moo. <laughs> now she, you know what I'm saying? Grammy, she's, you know what I'm saying? She's just nice. Like, I mm-hmm. fuck with Doja, man. And how versatile she is, man. No, she, a, she is very versatile. Very versatile. She could rap. Like, yeah, she's. She could rap. She's nice. Shout out, Doja. Shout out to the ladies, man. All right. All right. So, every, every artist we have on the show, we always have to ask this question. Um, it's usually like some people it takes time because they gotta really think about it versus some people it's just easy because they've thought about it before but who is y'all top five of all time top five of artists not just hip hop it could be That's any tough. artist yeah. artist just period mm. right. yeah don't don't be upset everybody gotta answer this question yeah. like it's nah, just I ain't upset. <laughs> like you going on the you gotta mm-hmm. think you gotta be off, like off the brain I'm going any order? Yeah, you oh, yeah. Any order. All right, so I'm going Mike. I'm going Drizzy. I'm going to throw Ye in there. Definitely Jay. I got to go Thug. Free Young Thug? Got to Free Young Thug. Thug. <laughs> <Slump. laughs> oh, that was five? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, number one. After this, there's no order, but number one is Drake. You know what I'm saying? He definitely plays a key role in my career, man. He's the reason why I even wanted to start making beats type shit um, and music. But Drake, number one. And then um, I got to throw Ross in there. I got to throw Ross, man. Ross is just different, bro. Like style, lyrics, Mm -hmm. like lifestyle. You get what I'm saying? Like beat selection. You feel what I'm saying? Ross, man, I got to throw 50 in there. That was my first favorite rapper ever. Got to throw 50 in there, man. That's a, that's three, right? Mm-hmm. Man. It's, it's tough. It is tough, you feel yeah. me? It usually gets hard at like four or five. Range. Right, right. Um, four, I'm throwing Mary J. Blige in there. If I'm being honest, my mom, you know what I'm saying? You know, Saturday, Sunday morning. Y'all know it's time to clean up the crib. She's throwing on Mary. She's throwing on um, Lauren. You know what I'm saying? So I got to throw a lady in there, Mary J. Blige, the queen of hip-hop. I got to throw her in there. Um, that's four or five. Man. Man. I forgot one. <laughs> I'm going to throw me in there. I'm going to throw me in there because, like, I'm definitely going to be one of the greats one day. And I definitely, like, you know what I'm saying? I got to. 
Cause I like some of I like I like I like my shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm definitely gonna put me as five. Feel me. I know I threw that off a little bit, right? I threw Mary in there. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah, I don't think we ever heard Mary before. Shout out Mary J. Blige, man. So what can we look forward to for the rest of the year? Like what can we be what can we expect from you guys? And then go into where we can find your music and any social media. So for me, looking forward for the end of this year, you know, I want to get out at least two to three more projects along with some music, you know, some singles and everything getting done. Because I got a lot of music in the stash. So it's just a matter of timing. But definitely new music, merch coming soon, visuals, a lot of things in the works, performances, more or less just giving the people a little bit more on me. Cause I'm trying to get out of that shell. Or just I'm not too big on the social media and stuff, but you know, being an artist, you gotta kind of have that in your lifestyle. But you can find me on Instagram m dot v one underscore underscore, and I'm on Apple Music or streaming platform. So check me out. So we in June. We got what half a year left. So I would definitely would say probably two projects. One one EP. Um, and then one full body of work. Definitely want to get some merch in there as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, just some some merch that just you know go coincide with the music, um, visuals. One thing I can say, like I'm gonna be honest, I only got I got more songs and projects out than I got visuals, and I definitely want to throw some more visuals out there and show my more creative side uh, when it comes to that. Um, got some more business plays. I definitely want to start like. Like showing people, like understanding that as an artist, you you have to be an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely want to show artists how to get to the like, you know what I'm saying? Get some bread here and there so you can fund your career. Because all this stuff that we said is great, but at the end of the day, if you ain't got no money, right. so you're gonna be rapping in your basement forever. <laughs> Tell you that right now. So, so yeah. So I want to do some business shit like that, and um. Is there anything else? Shit, you know what I'm saying? Shit, more, just more content. You know, I really want to show people like the process with my music and kind of, I want to gain more of a, a intimate um, core fan base, audience, and really diving into shit like that, giveaways and, you know what I'm saying? Getting that. So, that's some shit I got. Where to find the music? Oh, sorry, <laughs> my fault. Oh, you can follow me on Instagram, quality, Q U A A L I T Y, one underscore. Um, music, quality. Or my uh, or Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, whatever you want to listen to, you you know whatever you listen. I'm gonna start throwing some more shit on SoundCloud, bringing it back to the roots, because there's some people that can't afford the streaming platforms. Believe it or not, SoundCloud come in handy because it's free. All right, uh, until next episode, guys. Y'all can follow me underscore we want more on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Re the Host, and also you guys. You- Got a, the content on the website, man. It's my first, my last name, so serenacastillo.org. I got articles. I got my web series. Check it out. Check it out. And you can purchase my book. Buy the um, book. <laughs> buy the book, right. Buy the book. Um, thank, thank you for, you for watching, watching the show. show. That's all you, That's need, all you to need to know. know. Bye, guys. Holla. <laughs>